The following is a production of New Mexico State University. We're back again at Lotus Land in Santa Barbara, California. Steve Timbrook is giving us a tour of this fabulous garden. Well, Curtis, I'm really glad you're here today on a good sunny day. And this is a public garden, so the public is welcome to come here? Yeah, it's a public garden, but we have uh, a number of restrictions from the county because we're in a very exclusive residential neighborhood. And so all of our reservations, all our people visit by reservation. Ah, so they should call first and yeah, make a reservation. Yeah, they should call. And uh, this is funded and provided for by? It's run and operated by a private foundation, and mm -hmm. it's totally privately funded. There's no government money involved with it. Uh, we depend on an endowment left by Madame Volska, and mm -hmm. then memberships. We have over 2,500 members. and. Uh, grants and donations. And I see you've got roses here doing yeah. extremely yeah, well. Yeah, these roses are really a good thing for us, Curtis. We've been uh, able to garden this now for five years totally sustainably. We haven't added any fertilizers other than compost teas and the mm -hmm. mulches, and we haven't used any pesticides. So you're selecting only those varieties that grow well for you, too. Yeah, we're, this garden right now has varieties of hybrid teas, but they're ones that really do well in a coastal uh, California climate where mm -hmm. you get a lot of moisture in the air. And you've got another garden that actually is intended, it's pretty, but it's intended to support the beneficial insects. Sure, because with our sustainability efforts, one of the things that we do is uh, biological controls. And we've found that if we plant plants that attract beneficial insects, they'll spread throughout the garden and help mm -hmm. us maintain it. I see another one of my favorite plants here, the daylilies. They're yeah. easy to grow. Yeah, pretty easy to grow in Santa Barbara for sure. And there's a lot of different varieties you can get. We've certainly chosen just one for the mass color effect, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of different variation that you can uh, support here. An interesting fountain here, and the water runs down the middle of the pathway. Yeah, you know, this garden is one that Madame Volska didn't modify very much, and it really follows the main form that the Gavit family did when they designed this garden uh, when it was their home in the 30s. I like this wall we're walking through. Yeah, the uh, hedges here are Pittosporum. It's mm -hmm. a plant from Queensland in uh, Australia. Okay. The Eugenias, the small hedges that border the path, are also from Australia. Mm -hmm. Another part of the fountain fact, here. Yeah, isn't that a nice little rill that comes down then into another little bubbler? Mm -hmm. And I see you're making topiary, and this is interesting how the topiary begins with the form. Yeah, um, we started these this garden about three years ago to replace a, a former topiary garden that was in mm -hmm. major decline. And we had a local topiary uh, specialist who designed the frames for us. And we trained the plants to the frames. And then later on, as they get bigger and bigger, the uh, plants grow outside the frame. And you just clip to it, but you never see the frame. And it's important to choose plants that will do well in your area. Oh, yeah. You have to have plants that do well. You have to have plants that will take a lot of heavy mm -hmm. pruning. Um, mm -hmm. But it really gives you a wonderful effect. And I notice here you've got plants that do well throughout the southwest. Maybe not all of these. Some of these wouldn't be hardy. Yeah, we certainly choose. We have a much easier here because we very, very seldom get any frost. Mm -hmm. But, these, but are uh, these are succulents. They're very low water users. That's mm -hmm. important to us because we I mean, are often under water restrictions in mm -hmm. uh, California. And we're using Senecio madrilesi along the sides and then various other succulents in the, you know, the arcs of the clock. Okay. And you've got a whole other garden devoted to succulents. Yeah, we have one garden that's strictly succulents and ones that are not cacti and not euphorbia. Let's go see that. So I thought you'd like to see a different succulent garden. We looked at some mm -hmm. around the topiary garden right. around that clock. Mm -hmm. This garden, we don't do cacti. We don't do the succulent euphorbias. We concentrate uh -huh. on plants that store the water in a swollen stem. Like that one right there. Yeah, that one, you know, you wouldn't know it, but that's in the grape family. Right. And the succulent doesn't have to be in a crassula family or anything? No, no, it doesn't. It just has to have water storage. Okay. So and we've got a number of different families in here that mm -hmm. uh, usually are not succulent, but have some succulent members. Right, we've got... Uh, this is in the milkweed family, this oh, serpigia. Okay. Yeah. Up ahead, okay. right in here. This is in the cucumber family, the gerardanthus. Really? Yeah. In the swollen root area, mm -hmm. or crown area. Correct, that's right. Plants that we would know otherwise kind of look different. If they've come from a very dry environment, they've adapted kind that, of in all the same way. That's right. And we look at... Uh, We've got uh, pacopodiums here mm -hmm. from Madagascar, from Namibia. Look at that. Um, from the Makwaland in South Africa. A lot of water storage in the stem, not That's, in the leaf. Yeah, and also the protection of the spines, which you kind of associate with cacti as well, but mm -hmm. again, not cactus. I really like these over here. What a nice color. 
The deep burgundy color is really a favorite of people. It's an unusual cultivar. It comes from South Africa, and mm -hmm. uh, it's called uh, Aeonium Schwarzkopf, okay. or looks, which would mean brunette in Afrikaans. Looks almost like a rose here. Yes, uh, or like a little windmill or something. And for most of us, these are house plants, but some people can grow these outside, like you can. Yeah, yeah, we don't get much frost, so in fact, most years we don't get any frost, so we can grow a lot of these things that other people can only grow indoors. We can grow them outdoors oh. year-round. Look at this little calanchoe that's in my office as a house plant. Oh, yeah, do you like the little markings on the edge of the leaves yeah. there? Very that's attractive. Well, thanks. We've seen a uh, very formal garden, and we've gotten to see these succulents. And there are a lot of succulents we can grow outside, but some we grow as houseplants. Thank you. Well, Curtis, I'm really glad you came. It was a pleasure to have you here. The preceding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.